Hi there, Hope Player Connect group is going really, really well. Today we're finishing our preach series on the Kingdom of God and we're, we're looking um, at Kingdom Nations, which, which I'm really excited about. God has a big passion for the nations. God has a big passion for all the peoples of the earth. And we find that right throughout the Bible. We find it starting in Genesis and going right the way through to Revelation. And as we start this connect group together, that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a passage from Genesis. We're going to look at a passage from Revelation. Um, but if you've got your Bibles, turn to Psalm 67, because that's where we're going to land and spend the first chunk of our time. So in promises given to Abraham in Genesis 22, verses 17 and 18, it says this. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All the nations of the earth will be blessed right at the beginning of the Bible. And then in Revelation, it says this. And they sang a new song saying, and this is about Jesus. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Hear that? Before the throne of God, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. And then in Psalm 67, this is a psalm about Israel being a blessing to the nations. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and you guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. I encourage you, uh, for someone in the group, to reread the passage um, maybe in a different version of the Bible. I think it's good to do that. And then I'd love you to answer the following four questions. Use Psalm 67 as your reference point for these questions. You may know other stuff from different bits of the Bible, but, but don't draw on that knowledge just at the moment. Draw on what this passage tells you um, in reflection of these questions. Firstly, what does this tell us about God? Psalm 67, what does it tell us about God? What does it tell us about God's purposes? What does this passage tell us about people? And from this passage, why does God bless us? Maybe spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes answering these questions. They come up on a PowerPoint um, and then we'll move on to the next section.
Hope the uh, discussion went really well. We see in Psalm 67 that God's grace came to Israel so that it would overflow to the nations. Why has God so richly blessed us? So that it can stream out to the nations, to all peoples. But what we find in the psalm is that mission to the nations is not actually the final destination. It's actually that the nations would worship and glorify God. Mission exists because worship doesn't. Worship is ultimate. Passion for God is all important. The pursuit of God's glory should be paramount. John Piper says this, all of history is moving towards one great goal, the white hot worship of God and his son son among all the peoples of the earth. I, I love that white hot worship of God among all the peoples. As I shared during the preach, I think that God has given us an opportunity to be re- to reach the nations for us to play a part. Now, of course, we need to reach out locally and we invest a lot of resources and time into doing that. But I think there's also an outworking further afield. So here are four different contexts where God's grace to us is overflowing to the nations. And I'd love you to spend some time in connect groups praying into each of these different contexts. The first one is New Ground. This is the family of churches that we are part of. It's led by Dave and Liz Holden. Over the years, they have provided support to us. They've encouraged us. They've provided friendship and advice when needed. Uh, leadership training, resources, it's, it's all come from New Ground in that way. And when we appoint elders later on in the year, they're going to play a key part in that process. As a family of churches, we're involved in different nations. I may miss a few out, but Germany, Belgium, Romania, Brazil, South Africa, England, Holland, Scotland and France are some of the nations where God's grace is overflowing into. Secondly, India. We've got a long standing friendship with the Life Church in Mumbai. Um, On Sunday, we saw a video that Katie did about the team that's been there over the last 10 days, 10 days. Praveen and Thomas uh, are elders. They lead the church over there. And over the year, over the years, we have sent teams. We have prayed for them. We've provided financial support. I know that they pray for us um, as well. And they have a real sense in God that he is calling them to plant 100 churches over the next 10 years. And, and the context is, is difficult out there. It's, it's, it's tricky. So they, they need our prayers. And I, I believe that as a church, we have a, a partnership with them. We can help them uh, fulfill their call in God. Context number three is the Philippines. Um, 15 months ago, we sent Alid and Lou Cousins and their family to the Philippines to partner with Alwood and Rosie Wick and their family as they look to see a church established in Davao um, in the Philippines. Over the last 15 months, they've settled as a family or are settling, if I'm honest, learning culture, learning language, um, growing in team with the Wick family. Alid and Lou are grounded in the gospel. They understand church, they are passionate for Jesus, and they are throwing themselves into the call of God um, at this time, which is absolutely amazing. And then the fourth context is Ghana. Um, Our relationship, our friendship with Ghana and Michael is is a little less developed, but back in February, we had um, a charity called Compassion with us. They shared about the work they're doing in Ho in Ghana, uh, which is linked to Michael and Mabel and what they are building out there. And uh, on the back of it, um, Kings, we sponsored 50 children, which is absolutely amazing. That means a monthly contribution going out uh, month after month uh, from, from you guys. And so that is absolutely um, incredible. So four different contexts where the grace of God to us is overflowing to the nations. And this isn't just something that is nice to do. 
it is an important element of what an established church should be doing. We are getting caught up in God's purposes. Let me remind you, beginning of Psalm 67, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Now, in your connect group, you've got an opportunity to pray into each of these four contexts. God bless you guys.